Hi there, my name's Simon Tumier and welcome back to lesson three in this iPhone English Concertina course. It's a very simple course just to get you started on the English Concertina because we really want as many people playing this fabulous instrument as possible. I mean, look, just look how beautiful it is. I'm actually playing for you today. I've got a loan of this instrument. It's a 48 key English concertina. It's a, a wheatstone instrument. It's absolutely beautiful. You don't get many instruments that are more beautiful than this. Anyway, we are going to learn uh, the scale of C. Now C is of course on the piano. You'll have um, uh, seen that it's all the white notes. <laughs> Beautiful key. Right, so let's just get straight to it. Scale of C. Right, as we said in the last lesson, we talked about the fingering. Let's just quickly go back over that. Index finger, this is the left hand side of the instrument. Index finger is in charge of the the row to uh, the the second column from the right, the middle right. It's also in charge of the the furthest right row. That's on your left hand. Your middle finger is in charge of the the middle row to the left, and your ring finger is in charge of the outside row to the left. And on this side here, uh, your index finger is in charge of the middle row to the left. It's on the right side. It's also in charge of the furthest left row. And your middle finger is in charge of the middle row to the right. <laughs> and your ring finger on your right hand, if there's such a thing, is... Um, in charge of the out furthest right row. Okay, let's just look at the scale of C. Very, very simple. So for the scale of C, uh, as I say, the middle two rows are just like all the white notes. And in the scale of C, as I'm sure many of you know, there are no black notes. So we will only be staying in the middle two rows for this. Now, on a 48 instrument, a 48 key instrument, the C, which is middle C for all you piano players, is uh, is this bottom. It's the bottom of the column, middle column on the right there. So let's just put our fingers right, and we're just going to play a C. So there it goes there. Now the next note in the scale of C is a D. And that happens to be on the right hand. Now, I think the important thing to remember about the concertina is basically to play a scale, you go left, right, left, right. Especially, uh, it, it's both got... <laughs> I always wonder how to explain it. It's got pretty much... It's not got the same notes on each side, but you would, unlike an accordion, where it would have all the notes on one side and basses on the other... Uh, and uh, you, the concertina is like all of the piano on each side. So on the scale of C, you'll go, you'll go C, and then D, E, F, G, A, D, C. So that means, especially if you're talking to a sound engineer or something that has low notes on both sides and high notes on both sides. So the to play a scale, you go across the instrument, so to speak. It's not complicated, it's just the way it works. That's what it is. And, uh, and it's a great way because it's very rhythmical, it's great for chords, and you're totally balanced at all times. It's really, really good. It's a well thought out instrument. So again, we've got an instrument, we've got our hat, we've got our fingering, we've got the hold right, and we've got a note on the C. When you hear a C, Right, good. the next note on the scale of C is a D. Now, the D on a 48 key instrument is on the middle row to the left and it's the second button up. That's what it should sound like. 
Now, as you know from the finger, you'll be using your index finger for that note. So let's just two of them together. And again. Right, the next note in the scale of C is an E. Right, so C, D, E. Now, there's your E. The E is on the middle row to the left, and on the 48 key, it's two buttons up. Uh, can you see that? Uh, there it is there. Sounds like this. Now, I should use at this point to say that the way we talked about how the, the instrument mimics the stave, the musical stave, now, I think, quite interesting, when you're playing a scale, you, uh, each side is going up in thirds. So, that's not out there. That's your C there. And then there's your, a third up is an E. So you go up in diagonals all the time. Like that. So, when you're playing a scale of C, the, uh, each note is a diagonal up, either a diagonal left or a diagonal right and uh, so if you're lost just go up a diagonal okay so i'm sure that makes complete sense so here's an e it's a second note up of the bottom on the left center so let's just try a quick scale to there and again Right, good. The next note is an F. An F is on the centre, right on the right side. It's two buttons up. Da, da. And you are using your middle finger to play that. So, so that's what the notes would sound like. Can you get that? Right, so... Let's just play a scale to there. You'll notice also quickly that that is a third up from the D you played. Okay, so let's play it up to there. Again. Right, next note is a G, which just sounds like this, and that is one row above your C on the one one row above your C, which is on the middle right. There. Again, which is one diagonal to the right above your E. So let's try the scale. Pretty good, pretty good. Right, next note is an A, which is three notes up. Okay. So, and you're also going to be playing that with your index finger. And that, coincidentally, is a third a, a diagonal up to the left from the F. So let's try that as a scale. So index, so the index and middle fingers we're using on this. Okay, that's good. Now we're nearly there on the scale. Well, so well done. Uh, the next note is a B. Now a B is this note here, and that is third up. Third row up from on the on the left side on the uh, <laughs> uh, third on the middle left row on the yeah the middle left row yeah I think you know shortly you know hopefully you know what I mean sounds like this uh, so let's just play that scale and you're going to be playing that with your middle finger so. <laughs> Right, oh I never showed you the C. 
just did the B. Sorry, I think that confused you. Right, the next note on the scale is a B, which is the third row up on the middle left side on the left side. Sounds like this. So shall we play the scale? So go to, uh, so again, you're playing the B with your middle finger. Once more. Right, good. So that's pretty good. And then the last note in the scale is a C. It's a high C. It's an octave of from the C. So, and here it is here. No, it's not. <laughs> here it is there. Which is three rows up on the middle right row on the right hand side of the instrument. So, and you're going to play that with your middle finger. So, should we do the whole scale? So. Once more. Well done. Well, if you're managing that now, it'll take a bit of practice. Now, it's really important also, after you first learnt it and you're finding where the notes are, as you stop looking at your fingers. That's really important. Because if you can imagine as you start to play a bit faster and you and you start looking at your fingers, you're going to get completely lost. So good to memorise every one of your notes. And just use your ears, that's also really important. You can actually, so you can practice your scale, and then you might want to practice going up and down. <laughs> And then you might also want to practice going up even further. So you can just keep keep taking it up and you can go up another octave from that if you really want to. But the thing is, just practice it, don't look at your fingers. And uh, we're back in the next lesson, we're going to do the scale of G. And the scale of G is great because it's going to use the outer row and it's got an F sharp in it. So my name is Simon Tumier. If you want any more information or I can help you in any way, go to simontumier.com and I'll see how I can help you. Okay, right, cheers.